welcome to Wesley Methodist Church and the first of our four services for Advent. We pray that you will be blessed as you join us in worship of the God who came into the world he had made, lived a perfect human life in the person of Jesus Christ, died on a cross for our sins, rose again to eternal life and will return in glory to make everything new. During Advent, we traditionally light candles to symbolise Jesus as the light of the world, coming to shed light on our darkness and to show us the love of God. At that time they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. One of the oldest books in the Bible has perhaps the earliest hint about the second coming. Job's story is one of a series of afflictions falling on him out of a clear blue sky, without explanation, reason or apparent purpose. We the readers know the backstory that Satan challenged God about the authenticity of Job's goodness and God allowed Satan to bring one disaster after another upon Job to test his faith. But Job didn't know that, and his friends didn't help by speculating what he must have done wrong for God to punish him so severely. But denying that he'd brought it on himself, and clinging to his belief in God, he burst out with this confession of faith with its prophetic overtones. Oh, that my words were recorded, that they were written on a scroll, that they were inscribed with an iron tool on lead, or engraved in a rock forever. I know that my Redeemer lives, and that in the end he will stand on earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes, I and not another. How my heart yearns within me. The Psalms are full of the glorious reign of God associated with the second coming of Christ. Here's one of them. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it, for he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? 
who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false god. They will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God their Saviour. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, you gates, be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you gates, lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord Almighty, he is the King of glory. The early church lived in expectation for Jesus to return as he had promised. As the years went by and some of their members died, they had to adjust their ideas about the time scale of his coming. Paul had some reassuring words for them. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Job calls out, For I know that my Redeemer lives, and that at the last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, then in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see on my side, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. My heart faints within me. Well, my heart fainted within me, actually, when I realised what it was I was to be reflecting on today. The end times, Christ's second coming in glory, the judgment of, of all of us. What are we to do with these fantastic and terrifying pictures from our scriptures? How are we to deal with them in, the, in this day and age? Were they written to terrify us into heaven? I don't think so. 
Firstly, that's not the action of a God of love, is it? It's not the action of the God before whom, however hard we try, we can never stand worthy of God's love and attention and salvation. And in any case, it wouldn't work. Evangelists have been trying it for centuries, but still, in the end, our, our greed and our immediate desire for gratification wins through. We, we can't keep up the good life in the way that we know we really ought to be living. So that's not it. What are we to make of these scriptures? One link I found between all those we've touched upon this morning in our various readings and prayers is the context in which they're written. There is something in particular which links these end time readings of ours today. From Job, I know that my Redeemer lives. He's a good man to whom dreadful things have happened. He's lost his family, his wealth and his health. And then Isaiah, the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall see it. He writes to a nation in exile and in mourning because they've lost their identity. They've lost their homeland. They've lost their house of God. By the rivers of Babylon where we sat down and wept when we remembered you, O Zion. Then there's Jesus in Matthew chapter 24. They will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and with great glory. This is the last days of Jesus' life and ministry on earth and he's taken his disciples aside. He prepares them for the persecutions ahead. And then Paul writing to the Thessalonian church. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and the sound of God's trumpet will descend from heaven and the dead in Christ shall rise. Paul was writing into the heart of those persecutions that the disciples were then experiencing. And what binds these readings together is that they were written into the heart of, of extreme and deadly crises to comfort and encourage God's people, to help them to, to keep faith and to keep hope in God, who ultimately will be their redeemer. Things are running out of their control. Their fate has been lost from their grasp and death seems very nearby. And the message is, but God is in control. In the end, we shall see God. Our Redeemer lives. Advent is the season of the now but not yet. Clearly the end of the world is not yet upon us. Christ has not returned on the clouds. But we do believe, don't we, that the dead are raised and our loved ones who have predeceased us do abide in our Lord's presence now. But what is the now of the now but not yet about being redeemed and saved from the horrors of the world? Floods still devastate. Covid still kills. Global warming still lays waste to communities and habitats and lives. Our last hymn helps. Born thy people to deliver, born a child and yet a king, born to reign in us forever. Now thy gracious kingdom bring. Christ in his eternal reign touches our lives and our hearts now. OK, he doesn't wave a wand and remove all the pain or avert the crisis that we find we're in. But he does lift our hearts with his enduring presence so that whatever knocks us down, we are able to stand up 
and proclaim, I know that my Redeemer lives. I shall see God. Christ reigning in eternity, who shall come in the second coming, also comes to each one of us today in the here and now to lift our hearts and help us to stand, no matter what the crisis. Therefore, I will trust you always. Though I may, may seem to be lost and in the shadow of death, I will not fear, for you are ever with me and will never leave me to face my perils alone. Amen. Our prayers are the collects for the Advent season. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armour of light, now in the time of this mortal life, in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to us in great humility, that on the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty, to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to life immortal, through him who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Lord our God, keep us your servants alert and watchful, as we await the return of Christ your Son, so that when he comes and knocks at the door, he may find us vigilant in prayer, with songs of praise on our lips. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And now we give you thanks, because in Christ's coming among us, the day of deliverance has dawned, and through him you will make all things new. Amen.
and now a blessing. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God the Father, who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope, encourage our hearts and strengthen us in every good deed and word. Amen. Thank you.